to become who we want to be as individuals. And at the end of the day, that's going to help us be a successful offense. And a man, one on one coverage because the safety rolls to Jefferson's side. Jordan Love hit me up the night of the draft, you know, just congratulating me, letting me know it's time to work. Um, AJ Dillon was open arms. Von Rock caught a ball with his thighs. We didn't nah. talk about that. It was more of with his ass. If he throws a good ball, this is a running, catching touchdown untied. Right. Like, KP does like these flips after every win. And I'm like just waiting for him to do his flip. You know that we still love each other? That's what football brings us. Across the safety space. So you can tune in anywhere that you guys follow us on social media. Welcome to the Practice Squad Podcast, episode 66. My name is John. I'm joined by my co-host, Mark. And man, that was the most exciting week of NFL football I think we've seen to date. You had six games decided by field goals as the clock was expiring. Just good stuff all around, man. It's it's one of those weeks that just makes you remember why you love this sport so much. How you doing, Mark? Uh, my heart is a little bit, you know, <laughs> uneasy after the <laughs> the crazy endings to these games. Um, I somehow remained undefeated in my picks. That's yes. three weeks straight. Uh, I did have a push. The Lions. You did have a push, but undefeated. It's only right that it was the Lions that pushed because that was the best case scenario because the Lions get a win. I don't take a loss on my best bets because I did go against the Lions my best bets. Uh, but I wasn't wrong, but I wasn't right, which is well, fine. In, I'm still in your defense, game day, there were some lines that were minus two and a half rather than minus three. And so while you did push when we were making our picks, there is an alternate reality in which you actually got all four correct as well. So yeah. just worth pointing out. Um, crazy. That game was crazy. Um, we're going to dig into a lot of film review this episode because, look, good football happened. And so at the end of the day, if good football is happening, let's listen to us talk about shit less and let's actually watch good football happen. And, and we're all 22 film junkies, dude. I, I spend too much time. I mean, when I'm looking through aliens of the week, trying to find the top plays of the week that just aired, that's already up on YouTube. If you haven't checked that out, go check that out as well. But, um, I mean, it's just, there was some of the, this week, the playmaking, John, I mean, you already talked about the endings of the games, right? Those were just incredible. Um, all, all, almost all the games close to the finish, comebacks, right? Blown leads, all that stuff. But some of the plays, like the individual plays that were made, I don't think I've seen a week yet this year where there's more of these plays. Like I, I actually had to cut some plays out of the aliens of the week when I was deciding what to put in, what to, what not to put in. Like there was so many crazy good plays. Made and it's, it's that shit that like, in general, I think is why people watch the NFL is to watch people do stuff that like just isn't humanly possible in, you know, 99.99% of situations. And you just have the perfect athletes for the perfect situation to do some of the craziest shit you've ever seen. And yeah, I completely agree with you. This week was full of those kinds of plays. It's um, like amazing what people with that gift from God can do when there's million, they know millions of people are watching there's so much money on the line and you just put all of that pressure and all that adrenaline that just naturally comes like from within and the stuff that these guys are able to make happen physically and mentally on this field where everyone in the world's watching it like it it's incredible it's truly like just so fun to watch um we are so honestly lucky to be able to see Whoever invented football and whoever got it to the point where it's at, where it's just this amazing stage of greatness every week, dude, every week. Yeah. So honestly, all of our news events, uh, we can pretty much attach directly to recapping the game. So we'll wait to hit most of those. The only thing to talk about then is college, which uh, Mark, you want to mention Rutgers coming out to Sopranos. The Sopranos theme. Uh, most New Jersey shout out to the Sopranos. Seen. One of the best, <laughs> one of the best TV shows of all time. Rutgers doesn't have a ton of things to be proud of, but one thing they for sure can be proud of is that they represent Tony Soprano and that show. And everybody loves Rutgers football. And uh, you know, they, they don't have a ton to be proud of football wise, but that's one sick thing. That's a, you know, they can use that as a recruiting um advantage right yeah and you know all about the gabagool at the uh i mean dude when that song starts playing though you just get like that like <laughs> you get those chills then the other thing mark's prediction was correct uh jim harbaugh did get suspended somehow mid-season by the big 10 and michigan 
effectively went out and dominated Penn State. Um, I know scoring wise, the game was close, but if you're watching the game, like it was, it was no contest. Michigan John, State they didn't throw, they didn't throw a pass in the second half. Yeah, I mean that is like that is like. They turned the clocks back. Like offensive football this weekend got turned back. That's Big like Ten football, baby. Fifty years, man. No, I mean it's Big Ten football to run the ball first, but to not throw it at all and still win is incredible. And that's with a Heisman candidate playing quarterback. Like it's not like they were not confident in their quarterback. Like it's not like yeah. this was Iowa and they like, well, we don't have a quarterback. We just well, I was gonna run say it. people were clowning uh, McCarthy on that that stat line and i was like you guys watched the game right like he didn't need to do anything that required him to, to yeah, really th- play quarterback throw it if you can't stop the run honestly an incredible uh the picture of blake Corum, by the way might be college football picture of the year with the uh, cut on his nose like just that is that is that is football man like the true toughest grittiest kind of player um that you'll find and he just is a perfect image for what Michigan football is right now. Yeah. I mean, that is just like so perfect. It's so perfect. I don't know. There we go. Here it is. Sorry. I was trying to, I just tried to pull it up last minute. Just throw, just throw some tape over it. I'm gushing blood down my, and, and JJ McCarthy in the post game was like, yeah, I mean, I saw that he was bleeding. Was I worried? No, like he was going to come right back in. That's who he is. I didn't even flinch. You know, it's so sick. Um, yeah. And again, like, I know there's been a whole lot of talk about the merits of this entire situation. Um, and Mark and I both made our takes very publicly known over the past week. But, um, you know, looks like another season where it's going to boil down to the game again. All sorts of implications. If, if you are a Michigan fan or even if you're an Ohio State fan or a Big Ten fan, you couldn't ask for more than Ohio State and Michigan. Once again, both being undefeated going into that game. Lots of implications on the line. Going to be an awesome watch uh, nationwide. So I'm very. I will. For that. I will say that Harbaugh claiming uh, the America's team is laughable. I mean, expert troll the, move. The victim. The the playing the victim. Nobody does it better than Michigan because they're acting like. And I knew this would happen. They're literally psychologically brainwashed to think that everybody's it's against jet them. fuel it is it's jet fuel. all it is it's fuel dude but they've but it's fake fuel but they believe it's real everyone else sees like dude you guys are so corny and all the shit that you're getting punished for is like because you're breaking rules like that's why you're getting punished for things like you're getting investigated for cheating you did cheat it's not even a question that you did cheat it's just a matter of how extreme and here they are acting like they're the victim right and again i said it and you said it, it's only going to motivate these kids. Like, you're <laughs> not punishing, you're not going to make Michigan worse by taking away Harbaugh for two games, three games, whatever it is. I also still think he'll find a way to coach uh, against Ohio State, whether it's some sort of court order, some, like some kind of appeal. Like, I don't know. I, I think I just we'll get find, more information on that tomorrow, actually. Yeah, so. I feel like he's going to find a way to coach against Ohio State. So, uh, yeah. You know, Man. but shout out to my former coach for stepping in. Coach Jerome Moore is my former coach at Central. Um, obviously, you saw him crying after the game. A few cuss words slipped out, but he's an emotional. He's an emotional guy. He wears his emotions around his sleeve. He's one of the best coaches I've played for. He's one. Of, he's just a good dude all around, and it couldn't happen to a better guy to step into that role and to take care of business like he has when he's been thrown into these interim head coaching roles. I do truly believe he's the next uh, big head coach in college football, and I think it's probably going to be at Michigan when Harbaugh leaves, um, which could be any one of these years. I think he's the next man up, and it couldn't be more deserving to be him. Yeah, I've, the past two years, I have not bought into the Harbaugh NFL speculation. I, th- I thought he was still going to be there come the next season. This is the first season where I'm thinking, okay, if if they win the national championship this season, which I don't know what the odds are for that, you know, generally speaking. Look but pretty I'd good, say, man. I mean, say they look pretty good. Um, I think Harbaugh will, will run to the next NFL job that he can get. Like, yeah, I, you're looking at potentially the Vikings next head coach. I mean, the Bears, the Bills, the Bears played for the Bears. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have no clue, but I think I think if Harbaugh actually gets that that ring at, at the college level, that he is going to jump to the NFL as quickly as he possibly can. Um, all right. Speaking of NFL, let's get into recapping these games with a little film review where we can fit it in. So as Mark said, as far as our picks go, uh, Mark pushed on one game and won uh, three of the picks. So he is 32 and 12 on the season. That is picking spreads. That is real. 
Um, you can check the receipts. It is crazy. I hardly believe it myself. And I'm sitting right around 500 right now. Uh, so uh, also, you know, pushed on the Lions. We got Saints actually, really that game was horrible for a lot of reasons. And then, and then Steelers Dallas. So that's where we're at. Let's start talking about these games. Um, Panthers, Bears, the inverse tank bull. Bears come away with it. I don't really know if there's too much to add to this one personally. Um, Al Michaels sounded pretty sad for most of the game as he does uh, being put through these I mean, TNF matchups. It's At least we get a good Thursday night game this week um, with Cincinnati and Baltimore. So like a fu- at least we get a good one. It's been, it's been tough this year on Thursday night though. And it, it was tough is. last year and it's, yeah, it, it's tough. Um, these two teams stink and one of the teams had to win. I'm glad it was the bears. Best case scenario for the Bears this week. The Cardinals also won, so they're looking pretty good about getting that that first pick and, and maybe even the second pick as well. Crazy. Uh, has that ever happened before? Without trades, like like where after a team just gets first and second picks. Well, they get the um, first pick and then a, a trade they made last season. That team ends up being the second worst. I, I'm I can't not sure. think of one. Back to back first sure. and second picks is crazy. Um. So Titans and Tampa, it's really frustrating watching the Titans play because I can't, I cannot for the life of me figure out whether or not they're a good team because they will take it to some really good defenses. And then Tampa, who's been actually struggling defensively this entire year, I expected them to be a little bit better and are very inconsistent offensively, you know, smother them for most of the game. Um, I don't think there's any significant injury issues that I'm thinking of. So, you know, Levis, I mean, he came out hot, but he cooled right down. Um, and Titans are just looking like this, this same Titans team that, you know, was off to a rocky start to begin this season. The Titans have really struggled, man. And in their last 20 games under Vrabel, they've really struggled. I think they've only won like five or six games out of their last 20. Um, they're struggling. It's no secret about that. I picked this as one of my best bets quite simply when I did, it was, Tampa's at home. Tampa's hungry. Tampa's a exciting team that that's playing with a chip on their shoulder. Baker is playing at a very high level. He's proven people wrong like he has his entire career. And uh, you know, they took it to him, right? I told you that they're pretty good run run defensively. All the Titans want to do is run the ball, and if you take that away even a little bit and you make Levis have to make all the plays, he's not ready to do that, you know? If you can run the ball and then set up play action like he did in that first game against Atlanta, He's going to throw four touchdowns because he gets a favorable matchup down the field. When you take away the run and now you know it's a pass, he's not the same quarterback. He's not ready to do that. Um, and that's what I thought would happen. And that's kind of what did happen in a game that really wasn't that close. Yeah. Um, no, score shows it too. Um, the hardest game that I think anybody had to put themselves through, uh, Colts, Pats. Um obviously 16 total points scored is absolutely brutal. Gardner Minshew had a decent game. Um, I, I think I marked it. Did he make it into aliens this week? He did. That? He le- okay. he leads off the aliens. Uh, nice. The throw he made at the end of that game off his back foot while taking a hit to Josh Downs to move the chains and extend that drive and burn more clock and essentially clinch the game. Um, ridiculous, dude. Like he's a, he, Gardner Minshew – as a backup quarterback has he's made his career like he's going to have a career for a very long time in the NFL because he will be a backup anywhere i still th- remember when the whole anthony richardson debate was going on and this is a this is a podcast that is hot about that take i still think that dude's better than anthony richardson like he gives you a better chance to win they have a yeah. better winning percentage when he plays compared to anthony richardson like it's a simple I, I think, thing i get i think they knew that i just think they wanted to develop anthony richardson as quickly as possible and it was it ended up being into the fire and it's yeah i mean yeah i don't know like Gardner Minshew has earned the right to compete for a starting job and i i don't think it was fair to name anthony richardson as early as that because he's showing you what he can do i mean he did this stuff last year he, he he's been doing this since he's come to the league and that throw he made to clinch the game uh he, it was electric yeah, and a great I mean, catch too by josh it, downs who's having a great that, rookie year totally and and in that vein i mean i think Minshew's better than Mac Jones. That's for damn Dude, sure. The Patriots are dead. We said this a few weeks ago. Do you fire Bill Belichick? I think it's all but a done deal now. Like we might. Patriots will, are going in. 
Patriots are going into the bye week. Does is he the head coach of the Patriots? Yes. In he two will, weeks? I think I think he will have the respect of retiring after this season. Uh, but I don't think man. he will retire, John. I think he might take it. He'll coach somewhere else. Like, I, I don't think Bill wants to ever retire. Well, I mean, then he will be relieved of his his responsibilities, at least uh, for the Patriots. It is it is crazy um, what has happened to that that franchise. And I don't know, honestly, it, crazy enough. I don't think he's going to get a coaching job anywhere else because. Oh, he will. Dude, you joking me? He'll get it. He'll get it. He's, he's so the best stubborn. coach of all time. He's the best yeah. coach of all time. Someone's gonna, someone's gonna take a chance on him. I still I don't fully think believe. As long as he's not the one, like he needs offensive help, right? Julian Edelman on his podcast, and this is a guy who played for him for many, many years. He said, "Listen, Bill's a genius. He understands how to motivate players. He understands how to get a team ready to play football. He's not an offensive genius, and and he's stubborn in his ways, and he refuses to like. He needs to he needs to hire an innovator." Like a Ben Johnson right. paired up with a Bill Belichick, holy shit, look out, right? Like he needs to hire someone that's doing new things offensively. Like the game is changing, and if you stay stuck in your old ways, and I'm not saying you have to be like an air raid attack. I'm saying you just have to be creative in your runs. No, you, your, I think you're right. Your he sequence needs, of plays. Yeah, he need he needs like a Shanahan tree guy. He to needs come something, in man. Yeah. He needs something because he keeps hiring these these guys that he has rapport with, and you know they're just not able to get enough out of this and they're, i mean their their roster offensively is pretty weak dude like for the most part and it's... I, I would like to apologize on behalf of the nfl for the the german fans that had to sit through this game by the way i mean 16 total points scored a lot of kicks brutal. they love the ball getting kicked because it's as close as soccer <laughs> it's football it's football yeah there you go so a lot of punts and a lot like whatever i'm sure they were excited about it Okay, here's a, a crazy, crazy matchup. The Texans and the Bengals. If if you didn't hear us giving CJ Stroud his flowers last week, we get to do it all over again this week. This dude is legit. There were some scary moments in both his play and Houston in general's play during this game. But, man, the Bengals are no joke. To come away with a win for that game is crazy. And this is another one of those last-second time-expiring field goals to win it. Absolutely crazy game. Um. I cannot believe what Houston has gotten cooking in their first rookie head coach, rookie quarterback, rookie edge rusher. I mean, you have to feel like the sky's the limit for this team right now. It's, you know, we I, I said it in our preview episodes when we went over that division. I wasn't sure about Stroud. I'm not going to say that I knew he was going to come out and be a baller, but I was pretty sure about the rest of their draft picks, and I was damn sure about D'Amico Ryans. And I didn't think it would happen in year one, but it's already happening where the Texans are a dangerous team. They're, they are right now, as it sits, if the season ended today, a playoff team. C.J. Stroud, if the season ended today, might be voted the league MVP. Not just Offensive Rookie of the Year. He might be the MVP of the league. Yeah, And I, you can't sit Houston here and tell me that that's not a... Dude, I, he, I like, if the, totally if, I'm serious. If the season ended today and I had a vote, I'm trying to think of who I would rather vote as the MVP of the league right now. And I, I can't... I can't put Lamar. I refuse yeah. to do that. Can't put Mahomes has not Mahomes has not shined enough. I mean, Goff would yeah, be in the I, conversation for me. And even then, I mean, like, I can't think of as right, most valuable player who is the most directly responsible for their team's success. And the first person that comes to my mind right now is CJ Stroud. John, it, his play is directly influencing them winning games on yeah, a regular he, basis. And he's not just doing little dink and dunk ch uh, check downs. No, and he's, he's not, it to he's not getting Dell saved by the yards. running game. He's he's, he leads the league in completions of over 25 yards. You know what that's called? That's called an explosive, right? Remember the pew, 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 pew. Yeah. All that corny <laughs> shit. He's leading the league in those and that makes a difference in your offense because you have to respect that when you watch them on tape that was an excellent callback by the way yeah that was, that was pretty when, good. when you have when you watch that on tape you have to honor that like they're not afraid to take shots down the field with this rookie quarterback they're not afraid to send tank dell on a double move and trust that the offensive line is going to protect long enough for stroud to make his read go through his progression their offensive the line there. that's injured to shit by the way too I, none of their original starters started the season with them like it this is crazy is, what he's doing with a young team that's hungry is exciting, it's motivating, and honestly, it's the best thing ever for the NFL because they now they now have another quarterback star thrown into that mix. You might take Josh Allen and Lamar out of that quarterback star mix when it's all sudden done this year because they're not playing great ball. Um, CJ Stroud might step in and fill that void 
Because you're going to have Mahomes, you're going to have Burrow for the next, you know, that's Manning Brady right there. Like that's, you're going to have that, but you need a couple of the guys that, that can mix it up and look out for Herbert and look out for Stroud to be those next rising quarterbacks that really compete. And uh, I'm telling you, dude, he, he would be MVP of the league right now. Like yeah. it's ridiculous that we're saying that, but it's true. No, it's, it's, abs- I think you're, you're totally correct that there is at the very least, he should be in the conversation at the very least. Um, all right, this this brutal shit stick of the game where Josh Dobbs says his way with you know what is usually a, a really really good Saints team. Uh, TJ Hawkinson career game. That dude was doing some crazy shit and sacrificing his body on multiple plays where he just is getting rocked and he doesn't care. He has to come down with the ball and he does. Um, Derek Carr gets hurt. Jameis Winston goes in, throws two interceptions and in critical drives to get the the game. Two Todds too. Just like yeah. Jameis always does. Yep, there you go. Exactly. That the TD to interception ratio remains even. John, you know what? You know what they're doing in Minnesota right now. What's that? They got Josh Dobbs, and within two weeks of being there, has fans shaving their eyebrows. No, they do. That's a that's a new trend going on in Minnesota. They have fans posting TikToks shaving their eyebrows off of their head because Josh Dobbs doesn't have eyebrows. Obviously, right. uh, it's kind of become like. His, by the way is, does he have alopecia or like i think like, he does yeah okay i, I was gonna say i was like i was like is he just so smart because you know like all the like science fiction movies and whatever when somebody's like so impossibly smart they just don't have any hair on their body like i mean you know rocket scientist all he that might i mean he, he might actually be an alien like because he's in the aliens of the week <laughs> two for two now as a viking like he's in it this week you know no, no spoilers it's already out again go check it out um but dude he's making incredible plays and he's been with this team for literally like 12 days. And it's so just, good. it's just, it's just impressive. I, I hope he gets a starting gig somewhere. If it's not, if I, he's, it's not he's earned Minnesota. a backup gig for the rest of his life. I mean, yeah, and but, he's also I mean, a legend. No, he could be a starter, man. They I, have won five straight games, John. This is before he even came here. Like Captain Kirko was taking care of business. Yeah. He was on track to be an MVP candidate. And then he goes down, they bring in Dobbs. He does Detroit's his thing. ass right now. Dude, like, I, if you know, don't feel safe, Detroit. Do not feel like you have this division locked up until you've beaten the Vikings at least once because they are hot. And Josh Dobbs, I refuse to bet against him. I joked last week. I was like, oh, you know, there's no way he does it again. Like, you got to put Saints in your best bet. And John gave in and did and uh, probably shouldn't have, you know. What do you, do you know his nickname that everybody's saying? No. The pastor not. Did you see the TikTok that he posted on his own page of the guy singing higher by Creed as he scores? Yes. Dude. Yes. I mean, Josh Jobs is just like, he's he's just Legend. so likable. Very likable. I t- And just for those out there, everyone knows, if you listen to this, John is in a band. He makes his own music. He has an album coming out soon. He he's, plays guitar. He sings. He does all kinds of stuff. John needs to post some singing stuff. Not only on his own on his own page, but on this tic- on our TikTok, on our shorts. Uh, with football highlights going on on the side, I can, I'm calling. I'm calling for some of that. I can, I can probably arrange that. Um, I need some divorced I, dad, fifty year old music playing while Dobbs makes people miss and score. Like I need that every week. I need an Aliens of the Week play. We need, from we you. need like we need like a conditional or something like that, right? Like if if X happens, then then I will I will sing Creed while a play is going on. <laughs> What? All right. When we get to our when we review next week, we'll I'll keep that in mind and I'll see if I can find a what if this happens. Okay. And if you think okay. it's crazy enough, uh, we we can make it a YouTube metric too, right? We're close to getting 500 subscribers. By the way, if we get there, we can monetize the channel. That's kind of you know what we've been slowly but surely working towards. Maybe there's an incentive there, right? We get to 500 subs. I'll, I'll sing. I'll sing as many I think if you songs. Say, I think it's a win-win because I think if you start singing with football highlights right next to your that face might, on TikTok, that, might, yes. I, that <laughs> might take us to a million subscribers because that's the kind of thing we need. If you're hitting your – you got that voice too where you could totally hit some Creed. <laughs> oh, do it for man. Dobbs. Is that or, or, or shave your eyebrows? One or the other. I'm, I'm not shaving my eyebrows. <laughs> Oh, Come man. on! I'm just trying to imagine my my shoulder length hair with the. With you would not eyebrows. look good without eyebrows. No, I would not look. We have too thick of eyebrows to. I have very thick eyebrows, dude. I, I think mine are even thicker than yours. They little would not known, look. Little known fact: I have to friggin' you know wax them and trim them, or else it will just be straight hair. Yeah, across. dude. So that's I'm sure same you're here. You're talking yes. to an Italian. Like, I mean, yeah. come on. 
our, our ethnicities definitely do not lend well to us having what Iraq shaven and, faces and Italian. And, yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> not exactly going to be clean eyebrowed, but whatever. <laughs> um all right back to football green bay steelers dude how does mike tomlin keep getting away with this because the packers stink well no i'm just the packers no, do stink no no, no, no. they're second in the division right now that i know john absurd he, he's got a good defense he he drafted well this year we, we reviewed those the steelers draft when we reviewed it i mean that was one of the a's good. that we gave out and good draft for many different reasons Joey Porter Jr. is living up to the expectations. He's having a great rookie year. TJ Watt is having a freak year again. Um, Kenny Pick in the offense is doing just enough to not lose games. And they just make enough plays offensively to win games. And their defense is really, really good, you know, for the most part. And Mike Tomlin is just an excellent motivator. He knows how to prepare a team. He knows how to keep a team together. I loved the the comments that the media was throwing at him about pickings and, and flipping out on the sideline, demanding the ball, creating all this drama. And you, you really think about how good of a coach and a manager of people he has to be He's a to handle Le'Veon manager. Bell, Ben Roethlisberger, and Antonio Brown all in the same circle, all in the same time, right? And he made those guys look like gentlemen you know for an entire career when they were there as Steelers and you saw what happened as they left as their lives just kind of unraveled uh he just knows how to get the most out of guys and I mean you just can never count the Steelers out I was surprised this game wasn't uglier like I wasn't I I was surprised they didn't win by more that's that's such a great uh such a great thing to emphasize Mark because truly like part of being a good NFL coach right X and X's and O's massive the other part of it is managing grown ass adults with massive egos and millions of dollars and their own schedules and things like that. And making sure that they're locked in on contributing to your team as much as possible. And there are a very small handful of guys that do that as effectively as Mike Tomlin. Why do you think Dan Campbell's a good coach? You think he's that much better X's and O's wise than everybody else in the league? Absolutely not. Right. His coordinators are pretty dang good at that, but Campbell himself, no, what he does is motivate guys and keep them locked in and focused on the task at hand. And that's exactly the same reason Belichick was so good for Belichick. Some of these great coaches, right? I mean, Harbaugh, you know, um, John or Jim, I mean, you know, Jim was a hell of an NFL coach while he was, uh, let's not forget. He was, he he made an appearance in a super bowl. Correct. The Harbaugh. Yeah. (laughs) Um, speaking of John Harbaugh, this game, man, I was texting my one buddy who's a, who's a Ravens fan. And I was like, man, this team's so legit. They look so good. And uh, a couple of freak plays in the fourth quarter later, and they are trying to come back from behind rather than just maintain the the two score lead that they had. What have Um, I been telling you about the Ravens when they're behind? What have I been warning you about? Doesn't can't, they cannot do it. Lamar has not shown. I think he's only made one or two come from behind wins in his career. Like he and the and it's not just him. Big part of it is Lamar, but for some reason, they struggle with any deficit. And when they're trying to play catch up, they they don't do it well. And thank God for them that they usually get up on te- on teams and they just run away with games like they've done so many times this year. And you have people like you talking about how they're the best team in the NFL, maybe best team in the AFC, whatever. I I, will, I refuse to admit that. And they got exposed here, man. The Browns. Came back. Deshaun Watson looked like a little bit of his, of his former self. And when it came to crunch time, Lamar did not show up again. You Let's, know? Th- that, that pick was horrible. But I also want to come in and defend them here. I still stand by a lot of what I said because they did also put up 31 points on the best defense in the league. And I think that's commendable as well. Um, just the mistakes were killed them. I mean, the, the mistakes in that fourth quarter cannot happen, period. Um, I mean, that that interception doesn't happen, and they're they're winning this game. It's as simple as that. But you're right, that's on Lamar. So um so yeah, it was it was a crazy game. If you have not seen this one and you have a, an ability to watch a replay, highly recommend it. It was it was freaking nuts front to back. Um all right, San Fran woke up. Well, we called that. So my best bets. I had a pretty damn good understanding. I mean, they lost three straight games coming off a bye. You have me messed up big time if you thought they were going to come out and lay an egg. Uh, They were as motivated as ever. 
as hungry as ever. In the NFC, they can definitely smell that they need to start pulling off wins if they want to have a chance at the one seed. And are the Jags frauds or was the 49ers just like right? No, I, w- I wouldn't go as far to say the Jags are frauds. My problem with them right now is they have weaknesses that are going to get exposed big time in the playoffs, namely their offensive line. Um, that is giving them trouble anytime they're going up against a good front seven. Yeah. I mean, and, Chase Young and Boza combined was that yeah. didn't take long to become a problem. No. And, and every Jags loss off the top of my head, right. They're playing against some pretty legit front sevens and that is causing more problems than the offensive line can handle. And if that's your Achilles heel in the AFC, you're going to get knocked out in the first round of the playoffs every time. So it's, it's tough. It's yeah. And so, but I don't think they're fraudulent. I mean, I just, but I think that if they can't solve that problem, they're, they're not going to make it very far. So they, uh, I think we, we learned how valuable Trent Williams and Debo are to the 49ers. Yeah, no kidding. Um, Brock Purdy, once again, you know, looking like a top, whatever, 10 quarterback, five quarterback, just because of the fact that the weapons around him just make it so easy for him to do his job. Um, definitely cannot be discounted at all. How important having one, the best left tackle in the league, but then two, the gadget that is Debo Samuel uh, on your offenses. All right, this game, and we will have some film review. Like I said, I, I, I promised that. And then I realized that, you know, it's these last three out of the six games that we actually have some film to go through with this one. This game was crazy. Um, main takeaways is that one, it's nice to see the Lions actually win a shootout. Two, I feel horrible for Justin Herbert. Um, and three, three, the Lions' defense has got some questions. Well, and so that. to what? Here's the thing: is with a shootout like that, I don't know, man. Like, because Brandon Staley, Mister Defensive Coach, also let up 41 points. Yeah, I'm not so. saying he's any better, but the Lions are like you know seven and two, and consider one of the better teams in the NFC. But they, when they've played even a functional quarterback. They've given up a lot of points. I mean, it's Geno it's Smith a functional a lot. quarterback and a a big body standout receiver. That combo just seems to gash the Lions' pass defense every I mean, time. They have holes, man. They 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 miss CJ Gardner Johnson for sure, but they have holes in their secondary. And yeah. I warned you about the linebackers uh, and down safeties trying to cover Eckler and Keenan Allen out of the slot. And I warned you. I said they do not do it well. Keenan Allen was utterly unstoppable this game like literally i I think justin herbert had just short of an 80 percent uh completion percentage they converted on all of their third downs in their last five drives of the game they scored on you give that stat line to somebody and ask which team do you think win the game they would say chargers every single time but um believe it or not the lions were having (laughs) their way with with the chargers the exact same way they had almost 200 rushing yards before the half was over if i'm remembering correctly so we got it john we got to pull up the montgomery run yep we got to pull up the montgomery uh, run it's, it's the people the people are, are waiting for it uh this is one of the alien plays of the week but we figured we want to show it here because it is one of the best runs i've seen this year it's one of the best runs i've seen the last few years i want to take a second and give ourselves credit because on this podcast fantasy football preview we talked about david montgomery i put him as one of my top sleepers i said he'd be a top five back in the league this year not just you know not just a role player guy like i said he's going to be the guy with a little bit of gibbs sprinkled in and they're going to be thunder and lightning and that is exactly what they are you got to go to the let it play john and go to the um next view just let this obviously you can see the cut here makes three people miss the block yeah, i'm gonna, I'm gonna back that up just to let this this freaking play button go away because not only a block from jmo this miss i mean he pretty much gets one of the chargers players to tackle the other two guys like, three guys from the Chargers boom. all collide yeah they all collide and then the hustle from jmo and the hustle from uh, khalif raymond and then the balance to stay in My, montgomery's not a burner by any means to score a 75 yard touchdown a lot of things have to go right and that's exactly what happened on this play. The blocking was was top tier. But if you watch this from the end zone camera, which is what we're doing here on YouTube, if you're on Spotify, we'll try to break it down verbally. But Montgomery gets the ball. He goes vertically. He's not touched till 15 yards down the field. He makes three chargers collide with a sick cut. 
And then he gets help from j and Khalif Raymond, who both end up on the ground hustling their asses off to make sure they get out in front of him. Uh, Amin Ra is the first to greet him in the end zone because he's hustling as well. And it's just, I mean, that's just it's, like a brand of football that is going to win you football games. It's We've the, seen it before. The, the whole thing offensively is that's the mentality of every single player on this offense. It is incredible what they're willing to do for each other. We've seen the blocks from Craig Reynolds. Their offensive line is top in the league, and the receivers are willing to throw their bodies at people yeah. in order to lay down bo- and, blocks. And that's and that's what the key word you just said, John, willing. Right. There are so many guys that do this maybe a couple times a game or when they're when someone talks trash, then they start turning it on. The Lions are willing at every position, tight end, running back, backup running back, slot receiver. Does I mean shit, Goff's thrown blocks before. Yeah. Like this team is just willing. And they're unselfish. They don't like they just want to win football games and they want to do it the hard way. And it's really, really refreshing because it represents Detroit so well. And us being from Detroit and being a Detroit podcast, like this is what Lions football is supposed to look like and has not looked like in our lifetimes. And it is really exciting to see. <laughs> it, I mean, and you talk about balls of steel, Dan Campbell saying, I want to end this game with the ball in our hands, goes for it on fourth and two. And again, Mark, we talk about blocking and just imposing your will on another team. Watch the offensive line here. And I'll, I'll point this out after after it plays the first time. Perfect pocket for Goff. Perfect pocket for Goff. Perfect to option. All the time route. in the world. So notice Glasgow, who's the right guard when it comes up on the, the end zone cam for this play. He's supposed to be help for Sewell and Ragno. He halfway through this just stops and starts looking for somebody to block because both of those guys pancake their dudes. Look, that's Bosa that Sewell's just taking to the ground, and then Ragno's blocking the shit out of the other guy. Glasgow's just like, whatever, I guess I'll just chill here. And the Chargers have been a good pass rush team all year. Like, that's what's... This isn't like yeah, just it's Khalil bad, Mack and, and Joey Bosa. Bosa. Yeah. And they're locked up. They they don't even have a chance. It is and it, crazy. Honestly, and two, John, if you go back one more time, this was this was... If you pause it before the play... First of all, the circumstances of this play, it's fourth and two, I believe. You're already in field goal range, and Dan Campbell is he's just insane. I mean, had they had they not gotten this, uh, I mean, he would this message would be, probably be very different. And this is the kind of thing that scares me is because he will lose games doing crazy shit like this. When he when it pays off, he looks like a genius. But this was dumb. They're already in field goal range. Just kick the just kick the field goal. But anyway, they go for it. Um, this is like a mesh concept where you have crossing routes. You're expecting to see man to man. And what happens is they drop into kind of like this, this zone underneath coverage. And what happens is Goff recognizes, recognizes it early, hangs onto the ball and Laporta recognizes it. And he settles down in the zone rather than keeps running. So if you let it play, you'll see what I'm talking about right now. They're thinking man to man. That's what it looks like. They recognize that it's zone cause they're not chasing there. And he just sits in the vacancy of the, of that zone on that side. Right, that's that's a rookie tight end doing that with chemistry with Goff. Um, they haven't been teammates very long, and that is next level stuff to convert and to to get a, a first down, burn the clock all the way down so that you can kick a walk off. And uh, it's next level stuff, man. It's next yeah. level stuff from the Detroit Lions. That was one of the games circled on the schedule that I think most Lions fans probably assumed a loss, uh, or you know, if we were going to lose some games, that was one of the ones that was iffy. And the fact that we stole that and the fact that we stole the Chiefs game in week one and the fact that really the only game left on our schedule that we're not favored to win is Dallas. And right. so we're 7-2 and two right now. And That's with crazy. one game left on the schedule that we are uh, picked to lose by Vegas. So yeah. it's, it's that's pretty ridiculous. Nuts. Yeah, and look, I, I get that sometime – somewhere down the line, Dan Campbell's going to try to go for it on fourth down, not convert, and there's going to be questions – that you have to answer. But I think overall, right, this this is Lions football. This is their brand. This is what they want to roll with. And I would say we we won the Kansas City game because of our willingness to do that. We won this game because we're willingness to do that. And there's plenty of other games that I can't think of off of the top of my head where I think willingness to go for it on fourth down in these batshit crazy situations is what caused us to win those games. And if we win six of them because we're willing to do that and we lose 
one or two of them because we're willing to do that, I'm all for it because that's Lions football I mean, and that's Dan Campbell's coaching philosophy. Who the hell are we to question it? That's kind my of whole, it. my whole point with it, John. And I will question it is because when you're a team like the Lions were last year and the year before, yeah, do that. You have nothing to lose. You're the better team on the field in most games you play this year. You don't need to do that shit. Like that will, you'll win the game if you don't do that stuff because you're just better than most teams. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to hold back when it happens and it will inevitably happen where it's inevitable. He'll, he'll do something and he'll try to outsmart somebody and he'll do something that just doesn't make sense. Like they were going to win that game. Had they kicked the field goal on that fourth and two as well. Like, I don't think so. with the way the defenses have been playing, there was a lot of questions around us. How much time was left? Wasn't there a minute left? Yeah, there's a minute left, but Keenan Allen went down and scored a, what a 60 yard touchdown. The drive. Yeah, but that. I, I mean, I I, know, I'd I mean, be, if they don't get that first it. down. If they don't get that first down, you give Justin Herbert a minute sure. and all he needs is a field goal to win the game. If you just kick the field goal, at least you give your defense a chance to, you know, who, who do you I, trust more at this point in time? Ben Johnson's offense or the defense, right? I tr I trust a field goal lead with under a minute remaining that you'll bare minimum go to overtime. What I don't trust is missing the field goal or going for it, not getting it on fourth down, giving Justin Herbert good field position to drive, I don't know, hit one or two passes, kick a field goal and walk off and win. That was what was probably going to happen. So there's a lot of Lions game where, th where things like that did happen, but but they didn't for this game. They didn't for KC. Just, just be glad it didn't, man. Seven we'll, two. We'll have the, the banter about it. We'll continue to have it until you know. Again, they uh, um, they definitely. The Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say they they definitely are going to have some situations that are gonna call for that again, and we'll be debating it every time. But hey, you know that just makes this team more entertaining at the end of the day too. We're always gonna have fourth and shorts to debate every single Lions game. So. Um, Kyler Murray comes back and uh, it seems like he didn't skip a beat. I think people forgot this dude's actually a pretty good quarterback. Um, is he the best quarterback in the league? No, but like, let's not act like this dude's a scrub. Like he got paid the big money and he's mobile and he can throw well. Um, this was a fun game to watch, man. And also, I think at this point, if you're a Falcons fan, like there's a lot of questions around Arthur Smith. So two way conversation started there. Mark, what's your take on both? Kyler Murray. I mean, clearly didn't uh level up in cod yet because he was focused on this game um poor guy I, the, the, you know for him to come back from a knee injury as quickly as he did and to make plays uh with his legs like he did in this game was really reassuring to watch and honestly just shows you how far we've advanced in, in sports medicine um but i mean he was he was confident he was making plays he looked like he was having fun out there i mean you heard him you know, talking to the media after the game, just saying like, you, you got, you got me messed up. If you think that I'm not going to come out here and, and love playing this game, it's, it's, there's too much on the line. The, these guys are, these guys love the sport way too much. These coaches, everybody puts way too much into it for me not to give everything I have, even on a, you know, a year where they know they're not really a contender to make the playoffs. He's still out here playing as if it's the most important game ever. And I think that that's awesome to see. And, uh, and, and as far as Arthur Smith goes, some big questions, uh, I mean, the Falcons looked pretty good in the beginning of the year. I think they've gotten away from what they do well, which you broke down preseason, John, running the football and being able to do that and then playing complementary defense and special teams around that. They've kind of gotten out of that. And when teams realize that, okay, all you're going to want to do is run the ball, and if we take that away even a little bit, you don't really have an answer, they've struggled. Yeah, and – um you know, there's been a lot of questions on how they utilize their weapons too, right? Not only did we talk about their offensive line being better suited for for the run game, but also a bunch of big body receivers and tight ends, right? All lend to that. And people are now talking, right? Like how they're using Robinson, who they obviously drafted in the first round, how they're using their receivers. Like th there's just a lot of question marks around it. Um, and I think it's got a lot of people very frustrated. Um, I, I think there's a lot of really solid pieces to to work with for this game or for this team rather. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's finding the right coaching philosophy to fit the talent that there is. And, and maybe Arthur Smith has that in him and is just being an idiot the past few weeks, or maybe they find a new coach. I'm not entirely sure. Um, and also let's not forget, man, preseason talk, right? People did think Kyler was, was just going to 
stay on the bench. They're going to tell him not to play. They're going to tank and they're going to probably draft his replacement. That was definitely a narrative, a storyline that was going on before the season started. So it, it is good. Again, yeah, they're not going to contend for anything this year. I think it is good that they are subverting those expectations and, you know, kind of forging their own path ahead. Um, and, John, also know, a uh, total side note, totally off track, just got a notification. The Lions signed Bruce Irvin from the you know, former Seattle Seahawks pass rusher. Yeah. Um, I, I've just, just somehow, saw. somehow we forgot to talk about that. It actually happened about an hour before we started rolling and I didn't even mention it. Um, I just look, saw it. Older guy, more experience. Um, I, I don't think he's going to massively change our pass rush by any means, but I am uh, at least stoked that we're trying to do something about that right now. Um, again, if you have a weaker secondary pass rush needs to get home and Aiden Hutchinson, for those who haven't seen any of the games is getting held to shit and it's never drawing a flag and uh, he has no help. And so if, if we can't rely on Hutchinson to make those sacks, which I don't think it's fair to the amount that he's getting held and double teamed, um, then we need to rely on other guys too. And hopefully uh, Irvin's one of those guys again, later in his career, but has, I think 56 sacks over his career. So maybe he can make something happen there. I'm hoping Thoughts? too. I mean, I, th- I, th- I think bringing a veteran guy like that can't hurt, right? He's been on some Super Bowl teams with Seattle. He's been a part of some really good defenses. Um, you bring him in at the very least, he he gives you an edge, right? He gives you a, another leader in the, in the building. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, you want to talk about leaders for the Lions. There isn't a ton of just like natural vet leaders. Like it's a young team for the most part. A lot of our star players are, like within their first three or four seasons. Yeah. Um, Gardner you know, Johnson was the most natural of them, and he obviously has been sidelined. So, yeah, you know, like there's, changes the game. You know, the defense is looking for, you know, Anceloni, you could say it, but, you know, I, he's, I'm not a huge Anceloni fan in terms of his play, but, you know, bringing an extra guy in season, is, is, man. Uh, I'll say not, it. I'll, not, I'll come not out in coverage. I think that's, that's a false narrative. Whatever. Um, Let's get into let's get into Seattle. Speaking of Seattle, because Bruce Irvin came from Seattle, he's a former Seahawk. Uh, they took care of business against the Commanders, and one was another back and forth game that was uh, concluded by a field goal. Geno Smith pulled out the clutch gene at the end of the game, but Sam Howell made some incredible plays again. I mean, I think there's no doubt that he's definitely a dude um, and is the future at quarterback for that team. They're just missing some other pieces, but. Namely, offensive really linemen. <laughs> yeah, this was a really close game, man, and the Seahawks somehow squeaked away with it. Yeah, no, um, and I think you're right, Mark. I, th- I think the Commanders, right? They obviously were sellers at the trade deadline. Um, I think that's probably because they plan to move on from their coach. But there's a foundation there, and uh, I think Eric Bieniemy is actually doing a really good job as, as coordinator for them, and obviously he will be submitting his resume to that head open head coaching position. I think everybody kind of speculated that's that's what the, the events that might take place this postseason are going to be. And uh, and that's probably looking like that's what's going to happen. So, um, yeah, I mean, Seahawks, man, they're they're right in it. Um, you know, the, them and the 49ers, those are going to be some exciting divisional games. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, Dallas does the Dallas thing against the shitty team that, you know, isn't uh playing up to par at all and Dude. sure enough beat them by four scores five scores whatever that is the giants are bad god awful really really bad yeah and dallas of course dak wants to act like he's an mvp everyone's like dak could be an mvp micah parsons on his podcast keeps saying dak deserves his mvp conversations like dude are you insane like you're insane he beats up on all these on these little teams, and then when he plays a real team, he doesn't show up, or he steps out of bounds on the two yard line because he's a choke artist, like against like against the Eagles last week. I'm so sick and tired of Dak being, you know, portrayed as this like top tier quarterback. He's an average quarterback on a good team. They're not they're, they're not a great team. They're a good team, and it's just it's sick. It's annoying. It makes me sick to hear. The Cowboys get all this credit for being so good after beating up on a team that literally, like, is just dog trash bad. Yeah, um, it's uh, I mean, you know my opinion on Dallas, and you know my opinion on the Dallas narratives that always pop up every season just for them to do exactly what you said, right? 
beat bad teams by a lot and then, you know, fold when they actually have to play up to their competition. So um, I guess we'll leave it at that. Move on to, to Jets, Raiders. It stinks that the Jets lost this game, but I'll say this much. Um, Zach Wilson, I think the past two years, the, the hate has been warranted. I think this year I finally have noticed this dude has a lot of raw talent and actually a pretty good vision for the game. And I think he's just failed to be properly developed. And I think he's actually made a lot of improvement this season, just being in the same room as Aaron Rodgers. Um, who knows how he would have developed, you know, with Aaron Rodgers actually playing and this game, man, he did some freaky stuff, some super freaky stuff. Uh, I can pull up first things Zach, first, right? Zach is a momentum guy. Like, cause for every throw, like the sidearm throw that we're looking at right here, where he, he completes it to Lazard, that side is arm, so no filthy. Look. Sidearm, no look pass. And then he made a throw like a couple plays or a series later to Conklin in that last drive that gave him a chance to throw the Hail Mary, which, by the way, the Hail Mary itself was incredibly impressive that he made that so accurately thrown, scrambling away from one of the most athletic defensive ends, pass rushers in the league in Max Crosby. And to get that ball there was ridiculous. But this throw sidearm was just gross. Like he Nuts. every... For the problem with Zach Wilson is that for every play like that that he makes, John, there's a play that's equally as impressive in a negative way. Like the the interception that he threw to pretty much seal the game for the Raiders. Um that's that Spillane picked off on that little hook route. I mean, he 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 just looked right there the entire time. Like no no look off, no no you know, never saw that guy Spillane running right into that route. And that's just stuff that he falls back into these old casual ways that he used to, because he used to get away with stuff. He would never get picked off because as a college player, as a high school player, he was so gifted that he never really had to worry about reading the coverages or that ball was always had so much zip and so much touch on it that he never had to worry about it. Um, and to me, Every time he makes a crazy sidearm throw like we just made, it gets canceled out. It gets equalized by some play that is equally as bad. And you just can't have that inconsistent play as a quarterback in this league. And and the hate he gets, I don't think is warranted um, because he doesn't get any love for the good things that he does. Like if you show this Hail Mary play here in the All-22, it is, I mean, if Conklin doesn't get his hand on it, I think Garrett Wilson might catch this ball. The problem is, is when, you know, Conklin doesn't know what's behind him. He's just the, the scrambling that he does to get this pass off. And then the arm strength you need to sling it 60 yards, basically. I think 60 the yards. Hesitation on Max Cross. I mean, Max Cross is literally probably the most athletic pass rusher in football. And it's he makes him look crazy. silly. And then he throws it on the run, torques his body. And this was very, very catchable. I mean, Conklin and Gary Wilson basically both get their hands on it because, you know, they're not aware of each other's where they're at on the field because this is a, I mean, it's a tough play to execute as a receiver. Um, but this is, I'm, you're talking inches away from being a Hail Mary touchdown. And we're having a very different conversation about the jets and about Zach Wilson. If, I mean, that seriously, how he torques his body and gets it there. It's just sick. Some of the it's things crazy. he does. Yeah. I mean, and again, like I, the kid is clearly gifted and I think has just failed to develop the way that people expected him to. Um, but who knows? I mean, future seasons that that might be. Um, should we start with the news cycle on, on the, the Bills game? I think we'll start with it. OC Ken Dorsey fired off of uh, which I think there's a, there's a couple of reasons why this is weird. First of all, I think he's just kind of a sacrificial lamb. I think they needed to fire somebody after how embarrassing that loss was. Second, you you fired the guy on the wrong side of the ball. Who calls the defense? McDermott their head, does. Their head coach, yeah. Correct. It, I, I feel bad for Josh Allen. Um, and we've talked about it. We both like Josh Allen. We both admit that he's got a serious, serious turnover issue. Um. He's, this isn't a new I problem. Can, I can he, hop to that real quick. I feel he, like I need it, to. it's not a new problem. Josh Allen's had this problem since coming to the league, similar to like Zach Wilson, what we just talked about. So many of these crazy good things that he does get equalized by just horrible decision making at crucial times. This interception at the end of the half, just so air, you know, just like he, he, he believes truly 
to his core that he can make any throw on the field at any time. And Do his a, lot of, a lot of the time he pulls off things we've never seen before because of that. But a lot of the time as well, he tries to do stuff that's just not consistently done correctly. And it becomes a, a favorable play for the defense and it puts his defense in tough situations. You know, it puts the bills in tough situations. Um, but the slander against him is crazy. I thought the firing of Dorsey was premature overreaction. Don't let the media and all the hate of a sloppy football game, because they have been sloppy the last few weeks. Don't let all that get into your locker room. Like firing this guy, like this is a guy a few weeks ago that put up a perfect offensive game plan against the Dolphins. You know, like this is the guy that has a good rapport with Josh Allen. They have a good relationship. Like things that looked pretty damn good last year for most of the season. Like it's just, it makes me sick that he, he gets the cut like that. I want to put I, out. I, I think it's flushing the season down the toilet in some way, right? Isn't it kind of tossing yeah, like your they're, hands they're up and still, being like. They're still alive. I mean, they're still alive. You know, Josh said himself, time's ticking, but like they're still alive. They still control their own destiny. I want to put this out there. Um, because people freak out, you know, so much at this eye test and your record can hide things and how good the team is around you can hide things. Josh Allen currently right now, as it sits, has 13 turnovers. OK, Lamar Jackson, who most people would consider a quote unquote MVP candidate. Right, John, you you would probably agree to that, especially last week you were giving him his flowers. He's, he's, right? he's definitely playing up to a standard that I, I hope he'd be playing to. Yes, right. That's what you would think. Josh Allen, 13 turnovers this season. Lamar Jackson has 10. Okay. Josh Allen, 26 touchdowns accounted for this season. Lamar has 15. Lamar has thrown as many touchdown passes this season as Mac Jones. <laughs> that is crazy. Okay. So those but are that, the stats. I mean, that gets that gets loaded in a certain direction too, because what does does Baltimore have that uh that the Bills don't? A running game. I get a that. Running game. But the turnovers, John, I mean, he, Lamar is being asked to do less than Josh Allen in terms of arm-wise, and he has almost as many turnovers. And then you look at the touchdown production, Josh Allen obviously gets more opportunities probably. But, I mean, everyone's talking about Lamar being one of the – having a great year, like you right. just said, when really the stats aren't that different. The difference is the Ravens have won some games and the Bills have lost in some of those games. And all of a sudden, obviously the quarterback is either going to get the praise or the or the blame – because yeah. it's part of playing quarterback, but I just think, you know, well, and I think that's like, I'm not, I don't think either of us for a second are going to say that Josh Allen is not a good quarterback. That's, that's what neither Mark nor I are saying. I think both the offense and his decision-making lends to him having to try to put himself in superhero situations. And that's where the main problem lies. It's because he really can do just about anything on the football field versus other quarterbacks. There's not, really any quarterbacks that can do things that Josh Allen can't problem is, is that the context of him trying to do some of those crazy things, right? It's, it's, it's kind of like, right. The restraint that you see from guys like Herbert and even Stroud right now, where they know when to try to sling it far downfield for an explosive play. They know when to do something crazy with their legs. And I think Josh Allen kind of struggles with that. He either wants to, he just wants to be God all the time. And that's where I think he gets fit. Um, and again, I, I don't think I think the lack of run game and the lack of just coherency offensively are also not lending well to that. So um, also Russell can, Wilson looked kind of like a little bit like his old self. I mean, that pass I, that was I, the closest we've the seen that that I mean, pass John, that crazy. That is the closest we've seen Russell Wilson to his Seattle plays since he's been a Bronco. And I don't know what the hell where it came from. Because he has been terrible the beginning of the season. He was god-awful all of last season. Is it a Sean Payton effect? I, I don't really know what's happening here. The play calling is definitely more... You know, what's, you know what's funny to me, too, is the play calling is so much more like it was in Seattle, which is what Russ wanted to get out of. The irony in that. like He left Seattle and wanted to go do his own thing because I think he wanted to get out of that kind of system. When in reality, I don't think he realized that's the system he needs to thrive in. Yeah, and Sean that's, Payton, that's what he plays well in. I think I yeah. think it is required. My theory to this, because you've seen slow but sure improvement throughout the season with, with I think, the Denver offense. And I do think that Sean Payton has had to make some concessions in his coaching philosophy. And Russell Wilson has had to make some concessions on the type of quarterback that he is at this point in his career. And I actually think that's working right now, crazily enough. 
I mean, and even, uh, you know, Vance Joseph, I mean, the defense is objectively playing better too. The The defense defense has always been, you know, pretty solid, but they've had a couple of, I mean, I I can never forgive or trust the Broncos after me putting out my best bets. I mean, Hey, I might be 32 and 12 this year and I might have not lost a single best bet in three weeks, but (laughs) in week, I think two or three, I did put the Broncos as my best bet of the week against Miami and they had 70 points put on them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a 70 burger. So I can't ever trust them ever again. And it's literally in the ticker uh, to never, ever let me do that. There it is. Again. There it goes by. <laughs> so maybe one day we'll take that out of the ticker, but I can't trust them, dude. The no, Bills not. did everything in the world wrong in this game and still should have won it. I mean, 12 guys on the field on, the, on a missed field goal at the end of the game is inexcusable. That's the head coaches. That's I did head not coach believe. And special teams coordinator. Uh, I could not believe that 30 second like stretch where I was like, no way. Cause you're about I mean, to lose the bills should have still bad. won this game and they, they Don't were lose. awful. They were awful and still should have won this game. This was from my memory, the best mon- Monday night football game so far this season though, with the, the Be, crazy turnovers. I thought it was terrible with all those. It was, it was, play. Ter- it was terrible with the sloppiness, but it was entertaining as hell. I mean, the, the, you know, we get, a, you know, we get an extra ball. Bumble. Oh my god, dude! You know, <laughs> you know, what we get next week, right? And this will lead us into moving into next I was week's picks. Say, isn't it Casey Eagles? Yeah, yep. it is. Let's go. All right, so we got picks to make. Lots of them. Um, by weeks are Saints, Colts, Pats, Falcons. Um, and then yeah, I mean, let's let's get going. We're starting off with a good Thursday night football matchup as well with the Ravens taking on division rival, the Bengals, who I'm sure are very ups. Both teams are very upset about the losses that they just had to endure uh, with last second field goals. So Mark, who you got here? Um, the, the Bengals are, are favored by three and a half. Uh, I like Cincinnati. Um, both these teams are coming off of a loss. I think Cincinnati needs this one more than Baltimore and it's in Cincinnati. And so I will take Cincinnati. Okay. I, I'm inclined to agree with you as high as I've been on Baltimore. Um, they are not as desperate for a win as Cincinnati division rivalry. I mean, they, since he has to come to this game, ready to play, not to say their, their playoff hopes are gone, but let's not forget what the record is and the Rocky start they got off to. They cannot start slumping again. Uh, a second slump would, would probably cost them their season. Um, and I mean, for not for, <laughs> Um, the people who haven't looked at the AFC right now, it is as tight as it could possibly be. I mean, really, it's it, besides unless you're the Patriots, like this is anybody's conference to make it into the playoffs too right now. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to take Cincy. I think they'll cover. Mm, I'm going to take Cincy to win. Actually, I think Baltimore might cover. This is going to be a close game. It's going to be exciting. Um, Titans at Jags, another uh, division rivalry game. Um, Jags are favored by six and a half points. I, I don't, I think Jags might win it. I don't like them to cover that spread personally, just based off of the way that their offense, uh, has kind of been gelling the past few weeks. I like the Jags to cover, um, get back game, get right game, whatever you want to call it, get blown out by the San Francisco 49ers. You know, what are you going to do? That's a really damn good football team. You got to figure it out You get back with a team like the Titans who are, who are reeling, they're struggling. I think that I think you I think you figure it out. I think you figure it out. You make some corrections. I think you put it on them. Um, tempted to put in my best bets, but I, I will hold off. This one I think is is a lock to go in my best bets. I I love the Chargers uh, minus three for this one. I think uh, what their offense was able to do the past couple of weeks is absolutely not a fluke. I don't think anything that Green Bay has done defensively makes me think that they're going to be able to hold the Chargers to a close game. Um, Green Bay is really struggling, so I'm going to I'm gonna add uh, Chargers to cover win this game. Yeah, I think the same, but I don't – for some reason, John, I'm not – for some reason, I'm not sure about that. That, that. that line confuses me a little bit. That That's one of those weird ones. Um, I also like the chargers. I actually really like the chargers. I, I'm not going to drag in my best bets, even though I definitely think I want to, I'm, I don't know something weird about that game that I don't like that, that through that minus three is, I don't know. It's weird. You'd feel like it'd be higher. 
Yeah, you feel like it would be, but um, it's not. So I'm going to take advantage of it while I while I can here. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Giants at Commanders. Commanders are minus nine and a half. Uh, that is, I mean, that's pretty wide just considering how inconsistent the Commanders have been. I'd like them to win this game. I guess based off of the beatdown that Dallas just laid on him, I'll, I'll say I like Washington to cover, but I do not feel confident on that. Yeah, I think Washington covers as well. The Giants, as we've said, and I can't stress this enough, blow. They're very bad. They're very bad at football. Like, they're the worst team in the NFL. They have so many problem areas that they need to address. I don't even know where to begin. Um, But anyways, um, Raiders... At Dolphins, Dolphins are minus 12. I don't love that spread either, just with the way the Raiders' defense has been playing since uh, the firing of McDaniels. They've been a little bit more efficient on offense. Uh, I like the Dolphins to win this game for sure, but I could see the Raiders giving them some some trouble. Um, so We, miss, we missed out on a McDaniels versus McDaniel game. You know, Yeah, you, right. You had to get fired. Who's, who's better, the, the plural McDaniels? Or the singular we, Mick Daniel. He had to just go and get fired before he could have that happen for football fans all, all over the world. This is a um, paradox, too, because it's no matter what a plural Mc, McDaniels game. I'm sorry. I hate you. Um, <laughs> sorry. I hate you so much. Um, I need a booing soundboard dude, for that, honestly. That I kind of like the Raiders plus 12 a lot. Yeah. Um, but the Dolphins coming off a bye scare me. Like, what what does he have cooked up? Like, what does he have up his sleeve? You know, he's right. gonna throw it at him. He's gonna he's gonna throw all kinds of things at him. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put in my best bets. But I would take the Raiders. Houston is favored by four points at home against the Cardinals. I also feel like that's low. Something's tempted me to potentially take that one too. I I, I like them to win this game. I like them to cover. Ah, uh, best bets, best bets. See, I'm I'm one game away from being 500, and so I'm just being real careful this week. I just want to get to 500. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna take it though. I think I, I think I like them for best bets here. I know Kyler's back. I know his legs are fresh, but I don't know, man. I think they'll hang. Drew just threw a trap game. Yeah, into, into chat. he's right too. It is a trap game. Texans have everything going. They get all the love, all the praise. No one's talking about Kyler. No one's talking about this Cardinals team. They're just going to come in and I think just take care of business. I think that the Cardinals cover the four point spread. Um, I don't know about win, and I definitely am not going to put in my best bets. But I would take Arizona to cover. Okay. Bears at Lions, who are favored by nine and a half points. Um, yeah, something feels weird about that spread to me for whatever reason. Uh, I I do think the Lions should honestly cover it in their sleep, but I don't know, man. But the Bears are just this weird anomaly. Fields is coming back. The, ba- the Bears have been able to kind of put together some games that they shouldn't have been able to. I don't really know what to think of it. Mm. I don't know, man. I think I think I'm gonna leave it for for now, but I, I do like the Lions to win and cover. I like the Lions to win and cover as well. David Montgomery revenge game. Um, expect him to go off against his former team. I can't put in my best bets because for the same reasons you just said, John Fields coming back. There's a bunch of questions like that. I, you you would think that the Lions would cover that super easily. Something's fishy. I I haven't liked any of these spreads so far, as you can see. I haven't made any best bets. Um, I'm normally pretty aggressive, but just these, these spreads are fishy to me. You Ch- know? Chargers is the only one I feel like confident about even too. So, um, all right. Steelers Browns. I, I do want to note the, the over is 36 and a half for this one pretty low, but that's because you're pretty much having, you know, top five defense against top five defense and neither of their offenses have really put it together. Browns are favored by three and a half points. The Steelers beat the Browns towards the beginning of the season, right? I'm remembering that correctly. They did. Yeah. Um, and it was one of those games where that was the Nick Chubb injury game. Ugh. Um, Horrible. He did have a second surgery uh, this this week, and he's on track to recover and be ready to go by the 2024 season. So, 
that's great news. It is good um, news. Gosh, man. I kind of like the Browns to cover. I, you know, I think that that defense just creates hell for Kenny Pickett. Uh, you know, they're coming off of a, a momentum shifting game. I think that's a momentum shift for their season, seeing Deshaun Watson play like that. That's the first time we've seen him do anything remotely close to what he was doing in Houston before, obviously, everything happened. Give me the Browns' best bet. I think they I think they might blow the Steelers out. Browns' best bet. We got Dallas at Carolina, who are getting 10.5 points. Um, what, forty-two and a half for the over. I I don't know about Dallas covering ten and a half, but I like the over on this one. I think I'm going to take that. Yeah, Dallas might score forty-two on their own. You know, like that's, that, that's possible, right? That it's offense kinda... has been playing pretty well against bad teams. Um. I'm not going to, I think Dallas covers, but I'm not going to put in my best bets. They beat up on bad teams, you know. That's, That's what they do. That is what they do. Um, Tampa. Except for Arizona. Except for Arizona. Tampa at San Fran. Um, San Fran is favored by 11 and a half points. That is, that one's extra weird to me. Look at that spread and then also look at the over. So it's like 41 and a half points over, but you're also expecting the favorite to win by over 12 points, potentially. Pretty That's much saying that they don't expect the Bucks to score. Pretty much, right? They're just going to get dominated and all. It's going to look like the Jags game last week, basically. <sighs> yeah, dude. I mean, again, these spreads are... I, I'm struggling with these. I don't like many of these spreads, I'll be honest with you. I think the 49ers cover. I'm not putting in my best bets. Okay. Um, Hawks... At Rams, Rams blew the Seahawks out to start the season. A lot has changed since then, so we'll see if they repeat. Um, but they're they're getting only one point right now, which I I feel like they should be getting more, even with Again, the context weird, of them winning. Fishy, very like, weird. Don't understand it. Stafford is back, um, from what I'm hearing. I'm really tempted to put the Seahawks in my best bets. I'd, I'd be in support of that. I'm not personally going to, but I, I definitely think that's a good pick. Only down, yeah. I mean, you're, you're essentially picking a money line there. Yeah, Seattle best bet. I'm trying to think if I want to join you on that. Yeah, I, th- I think I will. I think I like it too. I just I don't see this Rams team beating them twice. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, the streak I have can't continue. At some point, I have to have a shit week, right? Right. This, the, all these spreads have felt fishy. Um, Jets at Bills. Um, Bills are favored by seven points. Right off of firing their offensive coordinator that I don't think should have been fired. Yeah, I don't... I I like the Jets getting seven on this one, honestly. With how mistake-prone Josh Allen has been, do we think it's going to get better week over week missing his OC? I Honestly, I don't know how their offense is going to look. I'm taking the under in my best bets, though. 40 and a half. Under 40 and a half. Zach Wilson, the Jets, can't sniff the end zone. Can't score a touchdown. And Josh Allen and the Bills lost their offensive coordinator this week. So I highly doubt that their offense is going to come out and be like some sort of super powered, you know, fishy for a lot firing of all cylinders. They might, you know, they might get a couple of easy ones. But both, I mean, both these defenses play tough. The Jets have like a, a bona fide defense. And then. The Bills have a defense that plays tough, and it's Zach Wilson. So, right. I just, you know. Um. All right, we got Vikings at Denver. Denver is favored by two and a half points. Uh, with Josh Dobbs, I, I can't, I can't fathom. <laughs> I'm covering, frankly. I'm, 
Isn't that crazy to say that the dude that got traded to the team two weeks ago? I mean, I'm thinking about putting Dobbs and the Vikes in my best bets, man. Going for six straight. I'm not going to, to. but I'm taking the Vikes to uh, to steal this game. Um, Not my best bets, but I'm not I'm not going against Dobbs till I have a reason to. And I still don't trust Russell Wilson, and I still hate the Broncos for what they did to me, make me look like an idiot. Um, Dude, both of these Vikings Lions matchups are shaping up to be something special. Which is crazy. Yeah, they played uh, twice wow. in the last three weeks. Um, I don't. I mean, Minnesota fans are shaving their eyebrows for this guy. So how am I possibly going to not, you know, pick the Vikings to win? And then uh, we got Eagles at KC. KC is favored by three points. Monday Night Football. This game's going to be electric. Um, yeah, I, I don't know who I like to win this one. Honestly, I mean, it's it's like is KC's defense good enough to hang with the Eagles offense is really what the question is. I think. Mm, Let me do something here. Eagles best bet. And here's why. Okay. And this is the one game I'm damn sure of. Um, Revenge game. Number one, right? Chiefs got him in the Super Bowl last year. That stings. You've got really competitive guys on the Eagles, like Jason Kelsey, Jalen Hurts, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, all these guys care. All these guys remember that. All these guys are still pissed off about that. Um, this Chiefs team is not as good offensively as they were last year. They losing. All, they lost a lot of their weapons. They still haven't really figured it out offensively. They're the turf will the not line. be ice this time, so yeah. the Eagles will actually get a pass rush. And I also don't know. I mean, you saw the Lions have some success running the ball against the Chiefs. Like the Eagles, I think are even better in terms of running the ball right now than the Lions are as a, as a whole offense. Now I know Jalen Hurts d- did not look completely healthy going into this bye week, so I that's the one asterisk next to this. But I think he comes out looking pretty healthy after a week off, and I think that the Eagles roll. I like it. All right, that's all the games. Mark in thirty seconds, recap your best bets for me. Yeah, so you got the Browns minus three and a half against the Steelers just because I think that the Browns' defense is too much for Pickett to handle. Uh, And again, revenge game, they lost the first one. I like the Seahawks. Uh, They're only a one-point favorite against the Rams at L.A. uh, in division game. A little fishy with that spread, but I just don't trust Stafford. Uh, I got the Jets under 40 and a half with the Bills. I don't think either team's going to score a lot of points because Zach Wilson can't score and they just the Bills just fired their offensive coordinator. And then last, but definitely my favorite of the four picks, the Eagles uh, to beat the Chiefs or to cover at least the three points that the Chiefs are getting because revenge, because Jalen Hurts is a tough dude, and because Kelsey's distracted over in wherever the hell he is with Taylor Swift in the bye week. Got it. Um, I took Chargers um, minus three because I think that Green Bay's defense is not going to be able to hang with their offense, regardless of their defensive situation. Um, I like the Texans uh, minus four against the Cardinals because CJ Stroud has been playing lights out and the Cardinals, while I'm stoked and Kyler Murray being back, I don't think are quite there yet. Um, I like the over uh, 42 and a half of Dallas and the Carolina Panthers because uh Dallas put that up by themselves last week against the Giants, and Carolina's not much better. And I also like the Seahawks for the same reasons that Mark listed. So that are our best bets for the week. Boom, boom, um, boom. Mark keep in 30, mind, 32 and 12. I, I have not lost a best bet in three goddamn weeks. Ride with me, children. Why <laughs> Ride with me. If you're a kid, don't bet. If you're not 18, you can't bet legally anyway. Go through an illegal bookie if that's the case. But ride with me. 32 and 12. That was not financial advice. That was not advice legally. That was just a, you know, whatever. But ride with me. That is legal advice. Ride with me. Um, Well, that recaps everything. This was a fun episode. I enjoyed the film review. I enjoyed talking about these games a lot. Um, Seems like we have another exciting week coming up here, too. A lot of divisional matchups. Um, Just good stuff all around, man. Uh, We are slowly exiting november and heading into december which is usually the best time for nfl football that's where it gets really exciting really fun to watch college is starting to wrap up you're going to have all the rivalry games there championship week all of that good stuff it is a good time to be a football fan and we appreciate you sticking around watching us if you have not yet please subscribe please comment please like please check out our merch line in the description It is linked there, and the merch is fire for a lot of reasons, so you should check it out.
I concur. I concur. Never a better time to follow us, subscribe than right now as the season gets stakes get higher, our content gets better. So subscribe, We've been follow, putting in the work check lately. Us out. We're close to 500. Help us get there. It would mean a lot. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next week. Peace. See you guys.